It's a Tuesday edition here on Zero Block 30, and today we have two rounds of the magazine. Round number one, the DOD admits there's UFOs all over our skies, and we haven't been detecting them for a long time. Apparently there's been <laughs> tons, there's been thousands upon thousands of different types of UFOs that the government knows about and nobody told us about, and they have no idea how they got there or how they're staying in the air, which is fascinating like they don't see them come down is it perpetual motion does it go against the laws of physics the whole thing is crazy we're going to break that down in round number one round number two we're going to do a little bit of hot uh valentine's day goofing because you are listening here on valentine's day on this tuesday show and we're going to do a dear zbt which kind of like dear abby we're going to answer your military related love questions today going to be wow yeah when oh. anybody relationship advice it's these folks two divorced people and connor so yeah. <laughs> we know a little something about relationships um and all that today is going to be brought to you by omaha steaks today's episode is brought to you by our good friends at omaha steaks how do you feel when you get omaha steaks i feel fantastic but nobody feels better than kate especially now that she's learning how to cook. If you haven't seen hers with Kate Knight with Large cooking a steak, you need to check it out. It's dropping today. Hail to the Chiefs of Steak. Enjoy presidential savings on Omaha Steaks. Favorite including their tender steaks, ocean fresh seafood, air-cooled chicken, and more during this President's Day sale. Go to omahasteaks.com and use promo code ZERO at checkout to get $30 off your order. That's $30 off an endless variety of delicious gourmet foods from perfectly aged tender steaks to juicy burgers, decadent desserts, and classic comfort meals. Everybody's backed by their 100% satisfaction guarantee. Visit omahasteaks.com, enter ZERO at checkout to take advantage of this exclusive offer. There is a reason why Omaha Steaks have been the leader in gourmet steaks since 1917. No one. And I mean no one comes close to matching the flavor, tenderness, and value of Omaha Steaks. Visit omahasteaks.com, use the promo code ZERO at checkout to get $30 off your order. Minimum order may be required. All right, let's get going with the show today. Uh, before we do that, we have uh, a little bit, because Kate, first of all, I had to tell Kate to turn her light on in the room uh, that she's recording in because she's feeling a little under the weather last night different things happened the eagles lost the super bowl and kate went out and did some things that i honestly got you get her a little bit of fire watch kate what did you do yeah i mean they can only be described as pfc behavior mm -hmm. yep. yeah yeah i don't katie back i don't condone this but I, I there's like no cute way to put it i got hammered last night yeah. um i truly thought we were gonna win and when i really started to feel that way i was like let's turn it up shots shots <laughs> shots shots i was doing shots i was at the barstool bar in philly and every time i turned around there was um these comedians that i knew were there and i was like let's do shots these other people that i knew were there i'm like let's do shots my cousin came through we were shots 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 and i was buzzing and then all of a sudden the game ended An oh, another thing that happened at the end i got really um excited in a bad way when the eagles the there was a flub or something on the field so I jumped up and I yelled. And when I tell you, and this is what they don't tell you about having kids. When I tell you, oh, I pissed my pants a little bit. <laughs> it, it wasn't a little bit. It was, I fully soaked my britches in urine. Like my bladder just gave way. <laughs> And I completely, yes, I completely <laughs> so fucked my... up that you said in urine there instead of like pee or piss <laughs> that you went whole scientific <laughs> on our asses. Yeah. I it urinated was urine everywhere. my pantaloons. It was <laughs> such an extreme amount that I was like, I might have to leave. But was I it couldn't... all like one burst, like somebody yes, did the yes. ice bucket challenge? Or was it, it like, was like a when my water trickle? Broke. It was like when my water broke. It was like a, it was like a, it was like, holy shit. I couldn't believe how much piss was in Actually, my pants. I'm picturing at the like water parks, you take your kid and the, the, the bucket just like tips over every like 20 seconds. And it's just a big flow of water. Oh, I thought you were going to go with water parks still, but Kate's walking around with a full watery diaper. <laughs> well, so then I couldn't sit then. I was like, well, I can't sit anywhere here the rest of the time. That'd be wrong. So then I had to stand and keep people away. From, I was like soaked in piss, which is so gross. It's so gross. When you said I, I, I'm in wet underwear, none of us said, how is your no. underwear wet? We just yeah. let it go. Okay. And we didn't want to know. You pissed yourself. It is the, the simplest answer is oftentimes the answer. 
Yeah, and it mm-hmm. wasn't because I was drunk. It was because that's my, like every now and then I'll laugh really hard or something. And I'll piss myself a little. That's just fucking what happens, man. Yeah, after you goofing, have kids sometimes. Yeah. But this was like, I was like, oh no, oh, I pissed. And then I'll, I'll just whatever. We're all friends here. Yeah. I also, after having a kid, when I'm standing for too long, like an Army Navy game, or when I'm like up on my feet for a long time, my hemorrhoids, man, my hemorrhoids. Oh no. Down last night because then i couldn't sit because i had pissed myself Mm -hmm. so then i'm standing i'm walking all around i'm yelling i'm being loud i'm drinking then i had piss pants my ass it's still i'm in agony my fucking dude i was a mess then afterwards i jumped into it it was raining out i jumped into a dumpster anytime you have (laughs) open wounds from the things like hemorrhoids you gotta get in a puddle you just have to i rolled in a puddle in the street for the video Open I was doing shit. man on the street afterwards. I was like, you know, it'd be a hilarious shot if I get in this big wet dumpster and the dumpster was full of food and trash and gross shit. Oh, you don't say that there was a bunch of garbage in a dumpster. And, and guess garbage what? juice is the worst. Oh, thing garbage in the world. juice is the worst juice. It, let me tell you, I was in my good coat. I had to ride the Amtrak train this morning back from Philly to the office in that coat. And the guy next to me was like, he turned out, he watched his other show on him on the yak. And he's like, I didn't want to say anything, but you stink. And I was like, yes. Um, <laughs> anyway, I'm in this garbage dumpster or whatever. The video comes out. That clip wasn't even used. I jumped jumped in that oh. dumpster for no reason. Um, How did they not it? use that? We need to use yeah, that. Yeah, seriously. It was, um, it was just, I mean... It was a Baba Duke vibe, man. It was a mm. Baba Duke vibe. So I was just, I'm struggling a little bit today, is what I wanted to say. Yeah, I caught a got... clip of you on the yak. And the one thing that stood out to me was how you returned to your hotel room and you were so downtrodden that you decided to eat Chef Boyardee with your fingers. It was too late to like order, deliver anything, but I had had the foresight to bring a can of Chef Boyardee down. Yeah, and I was as we pinching, all do. I was reaching in and pinching each ravioli through with my fingers, where you go through the flesh of the ravioli. You're like, mm. I was like eating with my bare hands. You know, um, it was... there's times, and you know, I love you like a sister. Like I, yeah. we're really good friends. We've been friends for a long time. Yeah, these stories make me hate you, honestly. Dude, yeah. I like this Chef Boyardee shit's fucking absurd. I you're, just, you're you're an adult you're a mother i know it's i know like, wait, i know how did you regress this far i posted two videos last night that are still up on my instagram story that i've watched back now you literally can't understand what the fuck i'm talking about when i'm back at the hotel room i'm like that's the thing about america and you're all free to party in the streets. And it was like, what the fuck am I was talking about? Was it that about? kind of drunk, though, where you know that what you're saying is ridiculous and whenever you sober up that you're going to regret saying it, but you just keep going because it's fun in the moment? Yes, yes. And I deleted a ton of stuff this morning. I woke up with my heart pounding. I went back That's down the in the hotel lobby at 2.30 in the morning in my pajamas um, to smoke a doink. <laughs> I really was on one, dude. I... Then whatever, whatever. That it. Listen, <laughs> the double, Listen. the double, whatever to end the story. I mean, my goodness, it's, Kate's going through it yeah. as you can see. Yeah. I'm kind of, but Kate the usually record, is the one that le- reads the long reports, as you guys know. I'm nervous yeah. if we're gonna make it through today. We got some yeah. great stories though. There's some UFOs going on. It seems like. I was getting texts constantly, like from my mom, from people that don't follow military stuff. Like, is this aliens? Is this, are we going to get invaded by China? Like we get those kinds of conversations all the time. People were texting me. I was like, this is the same. Are you talking about stories from two or three days ago? But no, like every, it seemed like every couple hours, there's a brand new balloon in the sky. A brand new UFO is what they're calling it. And we got to get to the bottom of this here because it, there's been at least four, and there's a report this morning that there might be thousands in the sky, thousands of these fuckers. Okay, let's yeah. go through. I went through a whole shit ton, probably 15, 10, something like that, different sources to get all this together so we can kind of set the scene of what we've seen in these Break first four balloons, and then we're going to push back of what it could be and what it could mean from there. Right. Uh, And again, I said this on the other show, but I feel like QAnon was starting to get into a little bit of a dip. This has been exactly what they needed. This has been their fucking meal ticket, man. For the next 10 years, they're going to fly off of this one. Great. You could write so many cool stories off this. And also, 
This should be the one thing. Get Space Force the fuck up out of here. It, that's the only thing you're for yeah. is the skies. And they say, oh, it's not even about space. It's high altitude. Uh, folks. Enough with got the semantic Space Force. You got a whole Thank branch you. you begged to have for the last few years. Now is your time to shine and you're just content to sit on the sidelines? Get out of here. It makes those Class A uniforms that they have even more fucked up. Oh, yeah. Like, seriously. Honestly, it really it's does. not even funny. Space Force. It's not even more funny like, anymore. Uh, it's annoying. More like don't do anything for us. <laughs> you got that right, Kate. <laughs> Nailed Let's keep it. going through the sure. article today. What do we got? Okay, so obviously over the last week or so, balloons, 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 big balloons, small balloons, uh, balloons on half off sale, balloons here and there, balloons everywhere, mm-hmm. balloons, red balloons, green balloons, balloon brown hands. balloons, tune balloons. Look mm-hmm. at me on balloons. Ninety nine left blue balloons. Ninety nine left not balloons. My <laughs> right. Here we go. So balloons. King of tying knots. Um, Mr. Mr. Fucking balloon hands over Chaps here. went and picked. Dude. New York Times, Fox News, MSNBC, Reuters, AP, Task and Purpose, Politico, Gizmodo, all those other things. He went and picked through so we can sort this out. So the U.S. military has shot down at least three unidentified flying objects over the weekend after the initial Chinese spy balloon that invaded our our space on February 4th. And that set off, of course, big diplomatic crisis with China. We canceled our visit over there. Pets heads are falling off still. At I this still point, think that the Secretary of State should have to change his name. You can't be Abe Abe Lincoln. Like, right? Like Blinken is his last name. Yeah. Abe, yeah, yeah. Abe you can't be yeah. that. Yeah, you can't Seriously, do that. It's confusing. Mm-hmm. That's probably where all this trouble stemming from, mm-hmm. if you ask me. Um, at this point, kind of unclear exactly what the objects are. There's a ton of speculation. We know what the initial balloon is because we were able to recover it. And there's like diagrams out there of it now and the payload that it was carrying and what that was collecting. But some of these new ones, they can't even quite say it's a balloon. So they're calling them UFOs, like unidentified mm-hmm. flying objects. That there's they're indicating that they're just smaller balloons, but they're not outright saying it yet because they haven't recovered them all, kind of thing, which is leading to a ton of uh speculation. What's also clear is the commander of NORAD, the Air Force commander of NORAD, has come out and said, I'll be honest with you, there's been huge gaps in our vigilance of what's up in the sky. Like there's been times where now that this is happening, turns out we haven't been paying attention like we should have. And this shit's been going on for a while. And it's been, I think he called it like a gap in our awareness or something like that, which and was that probably doesn't seem like something you should admit to the public. Right. You should say, this is a pretty common thing. We see this kind of thing all the time. It's just in the news, even though this is a very common occurrence it happens hundreds of times a day. Like if you right. said something like that, it co- cools the fears, but being like, we don't know how this happened. Yeah. And we honestly, we're out. not even paying attention. We have no I idea. Know. This we, uh, I'll be honest, I was on my iPad. I was yeah, I was watching. goofing. Sorry. I was goofing. So Making a obviously, February 4th, the first one is shot down over Myrtle Beach, which Myrtle Beach people, they were like, woo, hoo, fuck everybody. Those it videos really was. were great. Perfect. Those were great. Loving it. The other yeah, one F-22. should have been at Panama City when MTV was there. Yes. Yeah, Fred Durst should have been like, and now blow up the motherfucking balloon and the balloon bed. Everyone fucking their titties. Balloon tonight. Yeah. Give me something to break. Wow. <laughs> anyway, that would have been sick. Yeah, would have. F twenty two fighter jet uh, shoots a sidewinder at it. Boom! There it goes. And it was that That's was exactly at, like, the noise it makes too. Yeah, it's that's <laughs> impressive. It was at sixty thousand to sixty five thousand feet. Fast forward to February 10th, a UFO is shot down off the coast of Alaska. It was another U.S. fighter jet that brought it down. The object broke into pieces and was most likely not a balloon, according to the DOD, saying it was the size of a small car. What the fuck is that? It was headed to pretty big. That? It's headed to the North Pole. It's like fucking Santa. Was it like he's just doing a, it pla- a little practice I run? I hope not. I hope what not. if it was? Anyway, that's what I told my son, though. I said, it, brace yourself, that probably was Santa. Mm-hmm. And so Santa don't expect. Yeah. You think you Santa does practice Christmas routes? Got or to, he yeah. Just, yeah, yeah play absolutely. Like, right? train, yeah. yeah, train. Right. Um, the next day, the 11th, another UFO was shot down over Canada. An American F-22 got permission to go on up there over Yukon Territory, right on the border of Alaska, and shot another one down. Canadian officials described it as cylindrical and smaller than the spy balloon. It was picked. It was picked up on the radar Fridays. It passed. The last I'd seen, I don't know if they recovered that, but they were looking like for cylindrical, the like one of those cans of Chef Boyardee that you eat, like that. Oh like, my or, god! Like, is it a fucking cylinder or is it a sphere? Like, how does and you know what's crazy? Float? 
that can of chef I found yesterday, it was floating in an alley in <laughs> Philly. That's how I found it. I should maybe yeah. shouldn't have eaten that. Mm -hmm. um, the next day, February 12th, another UFO was shot down over Lake Huron. And does anyone remember the acronym for those? Huron? Holmes? 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 That's right. Huron's the first one on the list there. An oh. object first appeared over Montana Saturday and reappeared Sunday. This one was shot down over Lake Huron off Michigan. It was at about 20,000 feet. An octagonal structure with strings hanging off, but no discernible payload. Or the thought, way to see if it's how it stays in the air. Like if you're a Nora, that's got to freak you out. Like, or if you're an F-22 pilot, because that's, from what I read, that's the highest that any of these new generation fighters, like the 35 and 22, have gone in a real life scenario, like that high. And then you, you the pilot said, I don't know how, what the propulsion system is. We can't even, yeah. like, they can't even tell. That part's that's, very that's awesome. scary. It's scary, yeah. but the also- The fear of the unknown is real there. Could be DARPA though. I I did so many searches in so many different places and different types of wording for UFO UFOs and DARPA to see if they're working on something like that. That's a different type of propulsion or whatever. Huh. No powers, crazy. No powers, and I mean this one, the February twelfth UFO over Lake Huron was an octagon. I was thinking, what if it's unrelated and UFC is just trying something new? Patty the Batty. Maybe up there they're doing out. yeah, fly aerial because they do those aerial dinners now where they lift you up in the crane. Maybe they're doing air fights. Um, but national security officials on Sunday discounted the po the possibility that the objects might have been extraterrestrial. But General Glenn D. Van Herc, the commander of uh, NORAD, he said during a news conference, I haven't ruled anything out at this point. See, I can't have that. OK, mm -hmm. I can't That's have that. You know, spicy no. little meatball. Listen, I'm though, like, in my brain now. Pass in uh, yeah. It's like Ray Zelensky said, what the American public doesn't know is what makes them the American public. I've said that before in this show, but I think also our generation is so conditioned to hear UFO. I mean, we grew up with like E.T., Independence Day, ALF. Our immediate thought is aliens. You tell me like I'm not ruling anything out. That's aliens. Well, that, that's yeah, that's you, aliens. If you didn't rule anything out, you ruled everything out except for aliens. Exactly. Right? Exactly. And and at that point, get Will Smith on the horn. All uh -huh. right. Because now his now's his redemption tour. Because exactly now we need right. him. Yeah. But don't you think like you know how a restaurant will have a soft opening where mm -hmm. yeah the they'll only do a couple items off the menu and mm -hmm. they'll just kind of gently introduce it to people and just see how pop everyone reacts. How sure. is our staff reacting? How are the people reacting? Whatever. I'm wondering if the you put put your little tinfoil hats on. Are the U.S. introducing all these different little UFOs as a soft opening to tell us finally that, yes, there is extraterrestrial life. And guess what? They're here. OK. And so they're working with us to do a soft opening for you. We're going to introduce them soon. What, what, country country do you think they would, what country do you think they would be <clears throat> able to go in and become citizens in first? Not us. Definitely no, not no us. Shot. It's hard to be, get a citizen. They might be illegal when they come over that type of thing. We don't care what kind of technology you got. You can't come in here and take our anyway. Um, they haven't ruled out anything. They're who knows what the fuck's going on. Um, another thing and this is the what is listed on here now is the more information about the most recent one because that's the one that we're getting a little bit of alien talk is the last one where it's like, okay, what the fuck is really going on here? Yeah, and China only acknowledged the first one was theirs. So they mm -hmm. haven't that these other ones, so I'm like, is this Maybe the world leaders are like, we got to do a soft opening to the world about these aliens. And this has actually been, I'll take it from here. Kate. This has it. been kind of going on for the last couple of years. Since like 2014, the government has been so much more open about UFOs. One, because mm -hmm. I think social media is totally different. And two, the type of telescopes and things that the average civilian can have is way more intense than what it used to be. But the government has been saying things like, there's UFOs or they can't tell where it's come from or what country it belongs to. It happened in 2019. Senators were even briefed that there was a UFO in the sky that they yes. didn't know where it came from, which is pretty damn crazy. Trump was actually read in on it and he said, I don't believe the whole thing, which I understand that too. Look, can you please actually uh, read his quote that he actually said? Cause I, I, I think that's even, he's like, do I believe it? Not particularly. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's how I've been for the longest time. I've, I bet probably for the first 
35 years of my life, I would have been like, absolutely not. And then I watched that Carl Sagan video where they talked about how big the sun is comparatively to other suns and how big mm. our world is comparatively to the universe. You're an absolute fool if you don't think there's life outside the universe. Fool. Yeah, I don't think it looks yeah. like us, maybe, but I definitely think there's yeah. all kinds of other. I think there's a ton of. I mean, life Kate, out there. honestly, I didn't know where you were going with that analogy about the soft opening, but as you got through it, I'm thinking to myself, they're forward that observers. Kind of, that kind of makes sense. Yeah, I, I feel like I over the years that. they've been giving yeah. us little nuggets, and I think they're getting closer to being ready to being like, all right. Here we go, people. Here's what's happening for real. Now that and they're really Jesus. trying to do like there's people that are out there that are researchers, engineers, scientists that are trying to figure out based on mathematical equations, the odds that there would be aliens that are or whatever you want to call them out there. There's one astronomer who said his name is David Kinking. Kink? Kipling is what he said. Kipping. Um, he said, I've never been much for faith. I wanted an answer. So he went with this uh, by what is that word? Anybody know what that word is right there? Bayesian analysis? I don't know what that is. A Bayesian hmm. analysis, which I guess figures out hard and complicated math problems. But he said, this is where it gets more, where I can make more sense of it. He said, yes, there is basically infinity planets that are out there. So if there's infinity planets, but it's just 0.01% are the right temperature and 0.01% are the right amount of light, 0.01% have the right chemistry and 0.01% are the right age. Your candidate group whittles down and more and more you're left with a few feasible candidates at all. The squeeze here is not whether life would eventually evolve to intelligence. Instead, it's a three to one odds or three to two odds that there is life on other planets based on the conditions of other places that are known in the universe. So with these long range, like that one telescope that we talked about or the satellite that can see everything, we get the most high res videos or whatever, with those types of technologies, they've been able to check out and do estimates about all these other planets and the other parts of the Milky Way, and then extending out way past the Milky Way and saying that it's three to two odds in one of those places that there's life and intelligent life at that which is yeah. incredible. 75% yeah. probability of life, 60% likelihood of intelligence and overall probability, 45%. So See, I, think I think if you ask people in the 1980s, they would put that at like 5%, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I think I agree with you. And I'm, I'm, I was like kind of half joking, but I think there is more of an appetite now that we've seen the stories that we've grown up with and also with social media and how much people have shared that it makes it a little more, feasible, so to speak. And the Bayesian is based on Bayes theorem. And I'm just saying, once you get into those sorts of math equations and stuff, you have, have me lost completely. Yeah. So I'm not even going to pretend to know what that is, but it just seems like, all right, it's going to break my brain. So I'm going to have to take you at your word. Mm -hmm. And Kate uh, and I getting... interviewed somebody who said that they got straight up taken by an alien. I don't think yeah. there was any anal play, but he definitely talked a lot about aliens. Yeah, up in Maine or something like that. A whole town, a bunch of people who didn't know each other had this and never talked to each other had like the same story of this one particular night where a bunch of them were abducted kind of thing. And you got to say, hey, and also too, like all these, you have to be smart and you have to be pretty put together to be a pilot in the military, like mm -hmm. truly. Yeah, and absolutely. so many of them Especially came a, forward a and said pilot. like, mm -hmm. so many of them were like, I know what I saw. And I'm finally speaking up, but I was afraid to because people would think I was nuts. And enough of them came out that I was like, hmm. And we kind of look at, I think you're exactly right there, Kate, that people are having and they can video it now. Like that's the difference between F-32s yes. and 35s is that yeah. we have the ability. Before you just had to go on somebody's word and everybody's like, oh, these people are crazy. If you can actually video it, it makes it different. And I want to take something back hmm. about the government um, not knowing what's in the air. We don't know what's in the ocean either. A lot of times we have Dude, zero idea yes. when submarines come. There, It's just too big. I mean, the the sky, think about, I mean, this isn't breaking any, any news. The sky is fucking big, man. Yes. yes. Like monitoring a car-sized thing in the, the entire atmosphere is so small. Right. And Let's let give me a tell little bit you. of grace. Where you're an alien, okay? Mm -hmm. You come down, but you're you're trying to set up base here in the world in our little universe, Earth. But you don't want to be seen yet. You're not ready because you know you've talked to the governments; they're doing a soft opening for you, but they're not fully ready for you yet. Where are you setting up your base? The bottom of the sea. Mm. Mm. Yeah, 
The pressure, though, if they have the same, if they need the same type of environment than us, could they deal with that pressure? Because you see but what's maybe going they on they in like have the no, no, no. Chaps, they're in bubbles, <laughs> you idiots. Oh, bubbles, <laughs> I forgot about They're the not bubbles. just walking around down there. How they're in a bubble, a bubble <laughs> world that they've made. That's fucking stupid. I can't believe I forgot wow. about the whole bubble. I can't believe he said that, really. That yeah, pretty, I'm a, That was embarrassing. embarrassing. It is embarrassing. It really Jeez. was embarrassing. Mm. Uh, well, I hope the aliens are here, and if they were going to set up shop anywhere in the world, I think they would go to North Korea. Because nobody really gives a fuck about what happens there and everything satellite. Nor do we know what's going on there, really. Yeah, we don't know. Uh, they don't have a lot of electricity in a lot of areas. No. What did you say? You see, they had the big night parade, a parade mm. in the middle of the night last week where they showed off all their weapons and stuff. And I was like, why would they have this in the middle of the night, though? That's super weird. And then this Maxar satellite company was flying over North Korea at the time and got the, the shots from the satellite were incredible. The, like how close they were able to zoom in. They did it at night because they jammed everyone, like thousands of people into one square, mm. blacked out the entire rest of the area and then super lit that area to make it look like it was fucking buzzing and huge and the a massive parade. Nook. When really, when Bait you saw switch. it from the satellite view, <laughs> it was just one little city block crammed with people wow. um, and then pitch blackness for like hundreds of miles all around. It was crazy. Um, so I thought that was interesting. That is. Some would say yeah. they know how to do a soft opening. They do. They yeah. certainly do. Soft opening for their new, quote, nuclear missiles or whatever they got. Right. Mm -hmm. All right, let's do a little bit of romance. We're going to do some romance moving into Dear ZBT. I'm excited about this one. Kate, you want to read the first one? Oh, I'm going to spoil this for you. I already read it. Did you write this yourself? No, but I did add yeah. some, some special. I know lines. you did. Fuck. Uh, I know you did. Can we just do it that way still so the listener sure. gets it? Yeah, and please sure. act surprised. Okay, okay I thank will. You. All right. Okay. But this, but to clarify, though, this is a real... This is a real Dear Abby, but I, I took some editorial you took some leeway. liberties. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. My husband, Dear ZBT, aka Dear Abby, whatever. <laughs> dear Abby with a chaps twist. My husband and I are both active duty military we have been married for three years and have an 18-month-old daughter together. My husband is sweet, handsome, and a great father. We got married very quickly. Real original military people. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I think that's where our problems began. Uh, he isn't yeah. good. <laughs> yep. He isn't good at communication or showing affection, which leaves me feeling lonely. This, on top of being separated several times due to the military makes for a very shaky marriage. And it's, this does happen to like, I mean, you look at the divorce rates, it's insane. Chaps and I are divorced. Like, mm -hmm. and that is what happened. I think we were engaged eight months after we met. And then because you're deploying and all this stuff's coming up, there's this sense of urgency. Well, we have to get married because we're going to be apart for so long. And it's our way to show our love for each other. And like, you rush into things because- That's the exact reason why I got married early. I was at K-9 yeah. school- my ex-wife got orders to Okinawa. My original orders were to Cherry Point, North Carolina. And I was like, we got to get married so that they'll send me to Okinawa too. Yeah. Idiot. And you're young uh, and it feels so, when you're young like that, it feels so intense. And you're like, this is the only way we have to get married. Mm -hmm. And then suddenly you're apart for long stretches of time. You hardly know each other. And you're starting to realize like, oh my God, what have I done? Like we and maybe don't have the person. same. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't really know him, but I hate him. <laughs> right. <laughs> so here's where it gets a little rough. I have cheated on him with eight different people since our wedding. And I didn't change that. I did That's not change that. That's what I that. wasn't sure if you changed. I swear I to God, like... I didn't change that. I'll send the actual link if people call me an integrity violator. I did not change that one. I swear. Yeah. Listen, eight listen, different people since one, our wedding. One, maybe you had, you know, a moment of weakness. You had too much to drink. It happens. Eight is eight. a problem. And she just throws it out there like it's normal. And I think right. this is sort of like, if you get pulled over and the cop suspects you of drinking and driving, you tell him two beers, even though it's eight. If you're right. saying eight, you must have it's a probably crab basket full of dick. Like just unbelievable. I will yeah. say there were plenty of times where myself or my buddies, you know, when we were single, you'd run in and meet women. And then you find out down the road, like, oh, yeah, they're married. Their husband's just deployed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, the jo what was that show that. on Lifetime, the Jody show or whatever? Uh, mm -hmm. That was yeah. like, I was super into that for a while. Anyway, the affair I am most ashamed of was when I was pregnant with our daughter. 
I'm currently in counseling, but I'm still unable to curb my cravings. And to me, this sounds <laughs> more cravings like cravings for some ass, baby. Hell this yeah. sounds like a compulsion. Like they truly do have some kind of wiring thing that's like making them do this. Like I do believe to a certain extent, like I still don't think it's a reason to cheat, but I do think like sex addiction is a thing. Like, yeah. I don't know. Um, my ex was, and you're like, well, how does her husband not know? My ex cheated on me and I didn't, I had no idea. I was like knocked the fuck out when I found out. I was so shocked. He I was wasn't like ser- surprised at all when I found he, out about my He was ex. like a serial <laughs> horn dog who then one of his other exes sent me all the stuff he had been sending other women because he traveled for work. And like, he was a serial cheater and I had no idea. Like I was like, I still am stunned when I think about it. And it because made me that's question. that's an inherent trust that's given in that relationship yeah, absolutely. until and it I is completely never, gone. I think too. And I'd never, ever considered cheating. Like it wasn't even a thought that ever once crossed my mind. I was so loyal that it was like, holy fucking, it made me question. I was like, I can't trust anything in my own brain. And it made me feel like I was nuts, man. Mm -hmm. Um, So this is very bad thing. Um, Wow. She goes on to say this. This is definitely from her. I am big horny. I mean, like crazy horny. If I was a teenage boy, the side of my bed near the wall would be covered in crispy socks cotton splinters come cardboard anyway he always forgives me and allows us to continue being married even though i slang this cooch all over the lower 48 <laughs> come on that's good come cardboard cotton splinters throw a dick all over the row up chaps <laughs> row up Ooh. um is the part true where he forgives her where he she tells him and he forgives her yeah the rest true? of it's true that was the only paragraph i fucked with Oh, man, this is the other thing. As soon as I knew he was cheating on me, I was done. I understand that some people, if it's not emotional and it is like we weren't communicating and I was lonely and blah, blah, blah. Like I get how some people can work that out and stay together and like whatever. But man, as soon as I found out, I eight times, man, <laughs> eight times. That's Fuck, rough. Dude, man. That's it, not going to change. Just, it's so rough. And if you're going through something like that at the end of the show, we're going to have an ad from better help. You need to log on that use the promo code zero you're gonna get 10 percent off you need it if you're getting cheated on eight times yeah um she continues i know cheating is wrong and that i'm not only hurting him but my daughter as well but again i'm so horny i'm not even gonna read the next part uh should we divorce it says says, (laughs) but again i'm so horny that i could (laughs) i'm so horny (laughs) So horny, I can puke. Um. Dear God, I am too hungover. Okay, continue. Okay. Is he the one for me? She wants to know. I'm going to say no. I mean, yeah, I'm gonna just say, off the top, I'm going to say no. Is he the one for you? No. Cons, mm-hmm. your thoughts? This is really tough. Like I said, mm-hmm. if you had a moment, moment of weakness, I think... If you had a healthy marriage, otherwise, you could probably get through that counseling, talk through it. I I would love to know the age of these people, too, because I think that is a a huge factor in this story to see if they're mature enough to get past this or if they're just, you know, young people being young. Dog, I could Um, be 75. I I ain't getting past eight. (laughs) No, exactly. So that that's where I'm at, too. Right. Like eight people. If you told me Mm -hmm. eight and I'm also, you know, I'm, I'm smart enough to know that if you're telling me eight, it's probably 20. No, I'm sorry. We we cannot continue on and yeah. this is going to hurt because I probably really love you, but I can't have any self-respect for myself. Mm-hmm. How would my daughter respect me if we went on this way? So no, I'm not forgiving you. We're going to have to divorce. I apologize. Well, physically too. Like I had to go to Planned Parenthood and get an STD test when I yeah. found out. Like there's physical shit too. I was like, do I have fucking herpes or an std mm-hmm. like do i have crazy shit man you don't want cauliflower so, growing on your balls because your ladies out there sl- getting fucking eight dudes yeah <laughs> and once you know that it's like i i don't want to have sex with you anymore because who knows what i'm gonna get because i can't mm-hmm. trust you like i don't know man yeah i, don't, I think that's done though and that's that a little one. web of sex from eight people that are all surrounded Ooh. military oh military I don't people think about fuck it. man like they just fuck they do and like we've been all have been saying they fuck and then they're in serious relationships really quickly. So with that fast, serious relationship, 
you whoop, you pop off the old condom and start going raw dog. And that's what the way barracks get filled up with STDs like herpes and syphilis and God forbid chlamydia. No shame to it. That happens to a lot of people. You mm -hmm. just get it. Take care. Me, of folks that's right. Ta take this also. Sorry, really quickly. And then we can move <laughs> on to the next one. I'm going to take this from a commander's perspective. Okay. If, if this is one of my soldiers, his head isn't screwed on straight. And oh, if we're no. getting ready to deploy or, you know, even day-to-day -day operations on the base, his head, ain't, his head isn't right. And then God forbid we're at range or something and something goes wrong. So, I mean, as a commander, you might even need to step in counsel and figure this out for him. She's acting because duty it doesn't too. seem. Don't forget that. Oh, right. That's yeah. a little bit of adultery action. Ooh. That's against the UCMJ. Oh, yeah, that's That'd right. Be eight right. counts because she admitted it. I mean, that's. Lest we forget. Eight counts of adultery. Yeah, you can't And then do he's that. got blackmail against her then. And then probably has more leverage with the daughter and like, oh, my God, what a mess. I would say, too, like thinking back. There are no crazier relationships than enlisted relationships. No, big time. I I mean, you officers had your key parties up at the nice housing. I get that <laughs> part. You guys are freaks too. But I never in the civilian world have seen relationships as insane as the ones that I witnessed. Real housewives at the barracks would be Would be, I oh, mean, God. just- Appointment television. <laughs> right, like, because the circumstances are unlike anywhere else- in, in the world right between you know deployments you know the rules we have to follow it's it's all just a mess it's like yeah it's, it's like college dorms with a little bit older people and folks yes. that get a regular paycheck yep. yeah so Crazy. all right let's move to the second one what's the next one i didn't all change right. a damn thing about this one too okay okay dear zbt my husband of 10 years is horny his big veiny cock are you sure <laughs> no, no, i, I just made that, that up. that's okay doing a little Hello. ad -lib -lib. Uh, dear ZBT, my husband of 10 years is in the process of retiring from the military and is now reevaluating procedures and policies of everything, including our marriage. If I, if, if my spouse came up to me and like, hey, we need to go over the SOPs of our marriage, I'd be like, what the fuck are you talking about? Yeah, what? <laughs> the SOPs. Um, I'm trying to respect his needs in an effort to help him make sense of things. However, there are times when I feel some of his new rules are hurtful or harmful and need to be negotiated or evaluated. By the way, in general, I do not encourage or support the idea of rules in marriage aside from fidelity, and communication should be the rule in my opinion, but I digress. His latest rule is that I need to be covered when getting ready in the morning. It's not proper to be so comfortable naked, and if you respect me, you would do what I ask, he says. He said he thinks I look amazing now, but then added, think about when you are your grandmother's age. You won't be pleasant to look at. That's Dude, how right John there, Wayne Bobbitt divorce. things happen. That's, how, yeah. that's how it happens. I'm divorcing him. I'm right. done. I am never. I'll tell you this much. I am never having sex with that guy again. There's no yeah, way I can get He probably doesn't want enough. to because he's gay. I mean. Dude, that's, yeah, maybe. That's, that's the only. Thing. Dude, I. Every Something other, is way wrong with this guy. Every that's other huge. guy that's in a relationship guy girl whoever you want to be with never ever tell your spouse to get clothes on i mean that's the la the only time i tell annalise that she needs to put on clothes on if there's like a lawn person in the backyard or the bug guy's mm. about to come yeah. to the house other than like, that, hey, heads that up. buddy i ain't saying shit and in fact i encourage it yeah, well, yeah. Well, well we've seen your emojis on twitter mm -hmm. we know you guys did. how many times have you had sex out uh 1580 my goodness gracious um <laughs> But he said, he, so he wants her to be covered as his partner. I feel we should make each other feel comfortable in the buff. And it's harmful to ask our partner to cover up for any reason in the sanctity of our home. We have no children. We live alone. I've always gotten ready in the mornings to sway behind closed doors where no one but my husband can see me. Um, yeah, this, I would say to this guy, you're going to come to therapy with me and talk this out. And if you can't, then like, what the fuck, dude? I don't, I don't know do if, even well, if that's something that you could talk through. Like, well, to I me, think that's it's a bigger so problem. Unbelievably insulting, too. Yeah. Like, I'm not, I'm a gross looking person with skinny legs, oh, red I hair so everywhere. Gross now. <laughs> Just yeah. disgusting. If my, and my wife would never, ever, ever say something like that to me. Even if I gained like 400 pounds, she would never say that because she's kind. This is just mm. not only is he probably mm. gay, but he's also mean. Like, why That's would you be in a relationship do, yeah. with this guy? I just think it speaks to a, a bigger problem. If you're, trying to implement rules in your marriage as opposed to just, you know, talking through different things. I think it is a bigger problem than just, I don't want to see you naked 
or you need to yeah. have more respect for me when you are undressing. That's we just weird. Also, Go ahead. Kate. It, it's <clears throat> creepy that he's using the military as an excuse to behave this way. And he's saying, well, I'm getting out of the military. And so now I need to readdress other things because of the military is making me be this way. And it's like, no, dude, you're just an asshole. Hey, like there, a yeah, lot the of military people, yeah. <laughs> a lot of military people retire and they don't do that shit to their spouses. I would say 99.99999% of military people that retired like seeing naked people. Yes, I would agree. <laughs> That's I just agree. the way it goes down. All right, well, let's move on to some save rounds. And I'll, I think we're all, we don't even need to answer that. We're out on this fella. Uh, totally. mm. He needs to go find somebody that he's actually interested in sleeping with. Um, let's move on to some save rounds and alibis. Connor, we'll start with you. Oh, yeah, wait. just really go. Oh, go ahead, Kate. I had a teeny tiny news roundup. I'm sorry. Oh, let's oh, hear go it. I'm oh, sorry. It, no worries if not. But do we have time? No. Yeah. Okay. Oh, now let's do it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, I got really into this Nord Stream pipeline thing over the weekend. I had some okay. time on the train. I did a little Googling. I was like, what the hell? Do you remember last fall when in the, the fucking Baltic Sea or whatever the fuck, the pipelines got exploded yeah, and yeah. nobody knew? Yes. Okay. And it was like, uh, you could see it from space. That's how big these bubbles were coming up from the ocean because the two... So I'm going to talk about this real quick because there's this new theory. This journalist is like, guess who did it? The USA. Whoa. Did it when the USA was trying to point at other people, whatever. So we're gonna we get know into who it real did. Quick. It was that meddle and Biden too. <laughs> so back on September 26th of last year, a flurry of detonations on two underwater pipelines that connected Russia to Germany sent super cheap natural gas from Russia to Germany. Um, super great deal for both sides, lucrative for Russia, and then Germany got to enjoy cheap gas that was really beneficial, whatever. These pipes explode. And it sends gas spewing to the surface of the Baltic Sea. The explosions triggered four gas leaks at four locations, two in Denmark's zone and two in Sweden's zone. The magnitude of these explosions hit a 2.3 and 2.1 on the Richter scale. So there was, wow. there's no denying it wasn't just a mistake and something happened. There wasn't an earthquake under the sea that like... It was specific, they said, like explosion kind of shit that hits. That the seems Richter like scale. the kind of explosion that would change the course of like the seas temporarily. They said it it corresponded to an explosive load of several hundred kilos wow. for each of the things. Neither of the pipelines were transporting gas at the time of the blast, but they contained pressurized methane. That's a potent greenhouse gas. It was like 300 like million metric tons of like they said it's the biggest release ever you could see the gas bubbling to the surface of the baltic sea all the way from space Wow! like just the massive massive circles of bubbles that gotta uh, be fun to play with though right like space oh, bubbles like go over it on a tube there. and let them tickle your butt a little bit <laughs> oh uh, dude how little... much would cash love playing with those bubbles <laughs> uh, he's a huge bubbles guy he's a huge yeah. bubbles guy minus i guess it smelled methane i don't know mm. um <clears throat> the u.s and nato right away were like this is an act of sabotage and they started point, they're like, this is probably, I remember reading the news at the time, people were like, Russia had to have blown these up for some crazy reason, but why would they when it's their own gas pipelines? I don't know. And then Moscow was blaming the West. They're like, I know you motherfuckers did this. Neither side had provided evidence. But now this investigative journalist named Seymour Hirsch, he won a Pulitzer Prize back in 1970. Oh my God. Apparently. This fucking 52 years, or 53 years since then? I don't give a fuck. So, yeah, he probably he doesn't know shit. This guy he doesn't know. know shit. Yeah, but apparently, is like from what I was reading, a, a respected journalist. I don't know. Um, he could be a kook for all I know. I guess I got to do more research. But he did a blog post on Wednesday citing an unidentified source that U.S. Navy divers destroyed the pipelines with explosives on orders directly from President Biden, and this is from his blog. Last June, the Navy divers operating under cover of a widely publicized midsummer NATO exercise, Ball Tops 22. Um, and that, do you remember? We, I think we covered it on the show. There was a huge where you work with other countries and they uh -huh. do these big exercises in the sea. So we were there. The US was there doing exercises where these events happened. They planted the remotely triggered explosives that three, so they plant them in June during this exercise using the cover of this exercise. And then don't detonate them for three months. They let them sit down there and wait three months to get the cover off them. And then destroy three of the four Nord Stream pipelines, according to a source with direct knowledge of the operational planning. 
And again, why would the U.S. have vested interest in doing something like this to stop Germany and other European countries from patronizing Russia and continuing to give them funding for this cheap gas and to like cut off another source of funding for Russia, essentially? I can so see what, that. I mean, that part to me yeah. seems feasible. The part that doesn't, Navy divers and it's thousands of pounds or hundreds of pounds of explosives. How the fuck would you have enough divers to put well, hundreds of pounds of explosives. If you go to this guy's Seymour Hirsch's blog and everything, he gets into the details of these Navy diving teams, these secretive Navy diving teams and the the things they're able to do. And it was stuff that I had never, it might be an interesting topic for another show, but like, it was really fascinating. I'm not giving this guy credence. I don't know. He could be a nut. I need to do more research in all honesty, um, but it was really fascinating. Now the White House has said, this is utterly false and complete fiction uh, and Russia is like, oh, all right, bet. And they're trying to get an emergency summit now. They're like, we need to figure this out right the fucking now. Everybody, school circle on us. And we're going to sit here until we figure out who the fuck did this. They're calling and, for an emergency. And the session. UN is basically, they were like, this is basically like fetch. It's never going to happen, Russia. Yeah. <laughs> like, when, you're never going to be on our side again. Yeah. Um, and then finally, my other news notes. So pay attention to that. I don't know what's going to come of that. And if more details, like maybe more people will start to speak up now that there's a little gossip mill going. Who knows? Um, the other thing I want to talk about, I talked about that Palestine, 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 Ohio train derailment. Yeah. And I feel like we're witnessing another like Aaron Brockovich type shit happen. Mm. I was the toxic fumes of stuff going into the water and the ground people being told it's safe to go back to their homes but then them saying like but you probably want to get stuff tested too because like i just feel like this is just katie tinfoil hat now i feel like people should pay really close attention to what the locals are saying and what's actually going on on the ground down there oh absolutely. because i feel like they're trying to make this seem not as bad as it is mm -hmm. when everything i've read is it so much worse it's than got chernobyl light like a feel to it, like not nearly on that scale, but it feels real, real bad. Yeah. And rail experts, um, one of the guys who's like, his job was like an OSHA type guy, like 30 years in the business, like great record and everything said, they essentially said, cause they gave them a choice. They hadn't exploded yet. They set those cars on fire to get rid of all those chemicals so they could clear the accident. And he said, they basically set off a, a, mini nuke in a town so they could start doing work on the so they could start sending more loads and make more money on that train route again is why they did it so that's conspiracy theory kate but like a real non-nut guy was like yeah no no they fucking not they didn't have to do it the way they did it but that was the fastest way and that's what i don't know i probably sound crazy <laughs> no i man, think you sound I don't pretty know. spot on it'll be if rogan should. can do it so can i they fucking blew it up without <laughs> Anyway, exactly right, Kate. Okay, that's exactly right. Those All right, my, let's move on to of. some save rounds and alibis. Cons, what do you got? Save rounds and alibis is also brought to you by our friends at BetterHelp. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp, and when you're at your best, you can do great things. But sometimes life gets you bogged down, and you may feel overwhelmed, or like you're not showing up in a way that you want to. Working with a therapist can help you get closer to the best version of you because you feel empowered, you're more prepared to take on everything that life throws at you. Recently with my therapist, he's been having me go through this process of when I feel like I'm upset about something, pull out my phone, put it on my notes app, and then we go and see what the common themes are about things that I get upset about. And we talk about that every week. I have counseling sessions through BetterHelp every single week, and I have for about a year and a half, I guess. If you're thinking about giving a therapy a try, BetterHelp is a great option. It's convenient, flexible, affordable, and entirely online. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with your licensed therapist and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. If you want to live a more empowered life, therapy can get you there. Visit BetterHelp.com today to get 10% 10, 10 off your first month. That's BetterHelp.com slash zero. That's better. Help H-E-L-P dot com slash zero. Yeah, uh, really quickly, uh, Kate, I knew the Eagles were in trouble when you guys were flipping cars before the game had even mm -hmm. started. I think the oh Eagles were God. just a little too cocky. Disgusting behavior. They were a yes, little too big really for the bridges. Was. Yeah, mm -hmm. up, students up at Temple University were flipping people's cars. And it's like, why? I don't Dude, get anybody, that. Anybody who makes the life, life difficult for somebody else like right. that, like think about in the, the name college of... students deductible for their cars, Kate. We just found yeah. out what Dude. deductible was recently. Yes. College mm -hmm. students typically will go for the most cheap insurance they could possibly get with like a thousand fifteen hundred dollar deductible. Those people that got their like 
turned over outside of a dorm. It's a college student, most likely, that can't afford yeah. to even with insurance to go do it. Fuck yeah, that. that was like a bad. Uh, that was bad karma. It kind of gave a little bit of a Babadook vibe heading mm-hmm. into the heading into the game. So yeah, you're right. That was yeah. Good. Firewatch. Um, uh, yeah, Firewatch for those people. Um, mm-hmm. golly, Chris Stapleton, <sighs> so good. Oh man, that was so good. That was so good. Chills, buddy. Chills. Um, really, one of the better per- performances of the national anthem that I can remember in recent memory. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't want to put him on the same level as like Whitney. Whitney. Mm-hmm. I mean, but he's that well, was Whitney's close. in a tier by herself, and I don't think that right. will ever be touched based right. on the situation. Does yes, storm you're right, and Chaps. all that shit. You're right. Like yeah. I, I don't think that'll ever be touched. But as far as straight up vocals and just crushing it, not making it because we've seen so many times people take the song and they switch it up and do all kinds of crazy. He basically had the regular song, sang it and just has an amazing, beautiful voice. Just fucking nailed it. Awesome. And then speaking of performances, I guess maybe I'm showing my age a little bit here. But my first thought when Rihanna came out was, my gosh, that looks dangerous. (laughs) <laughs> when I know. she was it on does, the floating yeah. stage I'm yeah, like, is, she strapped in? For sure. is she strapped in right now because right now it looks really dangerous and i'm worried that she's gonna fall so um, and go, then yeah before we go on cons yeah. one through ten your rating of rihanna's performance kate we'll start with you i think it was an eight and i, I actually i'll say it was a nine i loved it i don't understand why people are shitting on it she had because... she has so many incredible hits and she went out and sang the best. It's like when you're doing a power hour, and you're like, that was a banger. That was a banger. That was a banger. It was like 30 seconds, 30 seconds of all her best songs, which are all great. Um, and I really liked it. And also I got emotional seeing that she was pregnant. And yeah, doing that. I felt well, like. So I think if you take yeah. it in a vacuum and you're like, was that good or not good? It just wasn't good. I would give You'll it like get a your three. turn cons. You'll get oh, your I, turn. I thought we were moving on. Okay, it's still no, your turn. I just, I just thought it was kind of powerful to see somebody a new mom only nine months postpartum like it took me till four months to be able to wear a shirt comfortably it took me till six months to be able to like go to the store and feel comfortable like physically I still almost two years later feel like I can't like my body will fall apart if I jog like Mm -hmm. my recovery has been tough and so yourself yesterday I peed myself (laughs) watching this nine months postpartum woman who's pregnant um, do that. And so I just thought it was like a really powerful, cool thing for, especially for moms to see, like, especially new moms and stuff like that. So I don't know. I got, I was drunk. I got so an eight? I was like, yeah, I'll give it, you an, give eight. it an eight. All right. Cons. All right. Old timer. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I give it like a, a three, maybe a four. Like when you take into consideration, she was pregnant and postpartum. It's like, wow, it's really impressive to go out there and do that. Given those circumstances. I don't think we hold that. I don't think we should do that. Okay, then if we're not doing that, then I just I was not impressed. Like obviously all of her songs are bangers. She has a catalog that is unbelievable, but in terms of like the performance of those songs, it just kind of sounded like she was just out there doing a sound check, just kind of going through them, plowing yeah, through. Them. So I wasn't that impressed. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. I agree with Cons. I, I whenever it was over, it was pretty funny. Mike. We clipped that by the way. I agree with Cons. <laughs> yeah, we should and make it a little sound bite. My yeah. kids were in there with us and <laughs> both of them were like, Man, that was amazing. And me and my wife looked at each other like that was fucking trash. I would say <laughs> yeah. uh, in my oh. life of all the Super Bowls I've watched, that's probably bo- it's definitely bottom three. I mean, and yeah. then to go after one, there was no like even features, like nobody else came out, like not. Travis Scott. I'm okay with that. People, I'm okay with people, that though. Yeah, but I think you need that at the Super Bowl. You need to There's have that. It's always a big buzz. I remember big. the one I went to the Super Bowl when I was in the Meadowlands because um, it was like the History Channel was like bringing veterans to the Super Bowl. And I was like, I'm, I'm a poor little veteran. Take me. And that's how I got to go. Um, and it was Red Hot Chili Peppers, who I've always wanted to see. And then boom, out comes Bruno Mars. And they right. did this sick collab. And it was like, oh shit last year when they had dr dre and then eminem and 50 cent and all those guys came out the year before i don't remember who it was but they had pink that amazing one prince was amazing like that we've had a lot bruno mars was yeah prince was cool we've had a bunch of great ones rihanna will not be in that conversation no at all no at all um anything else cons no that's it all right oh sorry congrats to cole christensen army football first army football player to win super bowl as a player Good there you him. go. That is a good thing. Um, I'm surprised it <laughs> took fucking hundred years. <laughs> All right. Yeah, <laughs> that's good. Um, mine one about the, the game. 
Jalen Hurts, whenever he had that fumble and it got taken back for a touchdown, yes, one yes, of the yes. things that they kept talking about on the broadcast was his composure coming mm-hmm. back out and doing it. I don't think composure is the right word. He had bearing. Like, because yes. inside yeah. your head, you are going crazy, I bet, at that moment. Same thing with Trevor Lawrence through four picks in the first half. To come back from that shows an unbelievable level of discipline and bearing because you have to go over instantly to the rest of your team and be like, hey, we're going to still do this. Don't worry about it. We're going to come back it's one play at a time. And to be able to do that and get them to where they were, I, I was very, very impressed with Jalen Hurts' leadership style. Patrick Mahomes, too. Damn near yeah, breaking his both. ankle again. Like They were both yeah. incredible leaders, incredible players. Um, I really enjoyed that. We would be remiss if we get didn't give a George Santos update. Kate, have you oh, seen it? Oh no, what's that? So there's a new George. To? So here we go. We ready? Yes. This is the headline. Amish country farmers say George Santos took puppies and left bad checks. That's the article. He promised a wire transfer of more than $5,000. He said Santos ended up writing a smaller check and driving off with four golden retrievers. Something inside me said, I just cannot trust him, the farmer told the Washington Post. The check then bounced. The farmer, who has not previously spoken to the media about the incident that happened in 2017, he said it took nearly two years for authorities to locate Santos back home in New York. He was eventually charged with theft by, guess what? Guess what? Deception is the word that no, they use. No, I mean, this him. is just Get a common thing. That's the second, the second fucking dog related stories well i saw one over the weekend that apparently he claimed to have something in middle school started a corporation in middle school or something and everyone was like oh yeah like the timing false. worked out to where it's like oh 2001 you were 13 and it's like wait you stopped working <laughs> yeah at you were what not a goldman about? sachs bro you were yeah, yeah okay so he, he had all of these different and he was doing it for months at a time they said that he ended up basically embezzling fifteen thousand dollars from these people <laughs> That George Santos, man, that's one I can't abide. I said I love him last week. I hate him this week. Can't do that. Um, And that's about it, I guess, for this show. I'm excited that we're going to be having – I decided that I'm going to go to the Veteran Hill Week in March. Me, Con, and Kate are all going to be there. Lots of organizations, including Wounded Warrior Project. If you've been listening to this show for a long period of time, you've probably heard me shit on them in the past. They got a new CEO in 2016. Cons and I sat down with him. That's going to be a large portion of the interview of the show on Thursday. You're going to learn a lot about what they're doing and how much more we have to do and how involved they were with the PAC Act and how, uh, I guess, organizations like really us and Wounded Warrior, Patrol Base Abate, and so many other service organizations, instead of being separate, how we all come together and do things for the greater good in the veteran community. That stuff is really kicking off. And if you have big time issues that you want us to talk about at the VSO week, and we're going to go speak with congressmen and senators and all that kind of stuff, reach out to us. We'd love to advocate on the listener's behalf too. If you have an issue that might not get as much of attention, but you need people to see it, we'd love to do that. Uh, DM or email cons at cons at barstool sports.com. Oh, uh, and if you want me to let me know if you want me to stop by your representative's office and see what freebies they have Mm. available because they have little freebies in there. Who had the best ones last time, Kate? Do you remember? Um, Florida had whole big old things of fresh orange juice. Um, South Carolina had peanuts. Um, a lot of good snacks. What would Pennsylvania have? You think chocolate bars? Chocolate, I forget what that was. I think it was a stress ball. Something Cons, what would New Jersey have? Maybe hey. signed albums of Greetings from Masbury Park by Bruce Springsteen? He actually just hangs out in there. Bruce yeah. just hangs out in there. That's, That's it. That's cool. Uh, I think Florida nailed it with oranges, and if it wasn't oranges, I would say it needs to be meth. I think that'd be the other thing they should get. Potato, out. potato. <laughs> All right, we'll see you next time. It's on the retreat. 